Okay, so here's the blog entry that you might have been looking at to see this video. What I'm going to do is quickly run through some of the steps so we get to the point of having the project created. I might gloss over some of the gotchas and things I had to work around because what I really want to do is show the contents of the project that it creates and how we bind the resources to commands. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the project. So I'll paste this command here. And you can see that I'm giving the demo service name, which is the name of the container namespace in the EDMX file that I intend to use. And that's one of the sort of gotchas at the time of the blog. So I'll create that. This downloads all the relevant artifacts from my repository. So now we've got a demo service project. Once a demo service project is created, what we need to do is take the Podata service URL metadata like so. I'll just grab that. Now I can just save that as a service EDMX file, save as in my data service demo service project. If I do that, I still have some of those issues to work around that I explain in the blog. So what I need to do is fix up some of the um, for instance, the complex types are not supported. Fix up some of the um, referential constraints so that we have enough information to create the way the um, entities are linked together. So what I'll do is I'll grab the one that I've prepped earlier, so you can see I've commented out the address and so on. And I'll save that. So now what I can do is I can change into my project and I can maybe extraction dash SDK gen. So this will generate all the project artifacts. What it does is it generates the resource interaction model, the metadata XML, and the Java JPA classes that we're going to link up to our in-memory database. So from here, I can just start the project. And once that's started, which only takes a few seconds, I can click on the link to open up my HTML5 JavaScript browser for this OData service. So there it is started. Click on the link. And now I can browse around the categories and the supplies and the products and so on. So that's good. Now what I want to do is I want to import the project into Eclipse. Demo service. Okay. You can see there's a few warnings. That's okay. So what it actually just means is that some of the um, generated Java files, the class files, have unused imports. So we just get source, organize imports, and that fixes all that up. Right, so now that we've organized the imports, we have one warning left on the POM. Now this just indicates that one of our plugins isn't understood by its clips. So you just ask Eclipse to ignore it, and that warning goes away as well. So if we take a look around the project, we have the resource interaction model, which defines all the resources and the transitions. So this is a service document, and we have the transition to products, transition to categories. On products, we have transitions to look at each individual product, plus we have transitions to put and delete. And if you follow the transition to that pseudo state, 
this edit link relation makes the edit and delete links show up in the browser so these um, update delete actions here so just by way of a quick example if I comment out the edit link relation and save my interaction model this behavior class is regenerated automatically it's also regenerated if you build the project so if I restart my service go back to the um, browser my um, OData.js browser the links for the product delete and update will be not shown anymore Like products, no longer have any links for delete or update. If we move on to the metadata, you simply define the product category and supplier metadata for each property. If you want to remove a property, you can just simply delete the property. Again, restart. There we can see we had the release date. Once this is restarted, the release date won't be there anymore. So one of the final things I want to look at is the, the Spring Beans XML. In the Spring Beans XML, the main part to be interested in for the moment is these commands. So these commands are put into a map and made available to this command controller. That command controller does the work of looking up the implementation of these commands. So the interaction model is a conceptual definition of how the resources interact with one another. We define the logical um, mechanism by which we implement the get entities in our commands and we define some of the physical properties of how we connect in our properties files. So, so a lot of these commands here are OData commands and so all we need to do is bind in a producer any kind of OData for J producer. So that's basically it. Well thank you for watching and as you can see it's early days for the Iris project but I hope you can see the potential.